A strange twist has happened. Everything was great. Some people have left. Let's find out what happened. Let's ask Rob. Jazz is just, that's it. You didn't have I know that. You that was great. Saying, you can't change it, but I'm just saying. Don't let it happen again. That's all I'm saying. Great. It's all great. I'm, I'm going to do what it takes to make this movie, Rob. Period. It's his idea. I asked. It's his movie. I asked for you. Okay. He makes this, a decision. He makes a decision. Ego, God. Not you. Just drop it. Not you. You are a lousy. You're going to burn in hell. Just get it over with, fucker. Okay, what are your names? Rob. Rob, I don't that's right. And Chaz, C-H-A-Z. Okay, so I'll write <coughs> you guys as such. Well, Rob, I guess the first question is going to be, how did this all get started? Came up to me and asked me if I wrote a script. And I said, okay, and we need some details on what kind. What kind of script you want? Tommy, horror. I said, okay, fine. Came over here and we started talking about the characters, what they would do, how they're going to get uh, whacked off, if you want to call it that. So we're here now with Kevin, playing Steve. Let's hear his intake on this whole film. So, a um, little bit about your character. Let me hear what you think of the character. Um, Steve. Steve is a cold-hearted, deadly killer. I mean, his whole goal in life is to just kill people. I'm Steve. Where in the hell am I? We're in some kind of a holding room. And then we now, the scene top. is opening up where everybody's asleep on the floor. They've been passed out, they've been kidnapped, and they've all, all seven have been placed in this room. They all eventually wake up to find out they're in a room with collars on that zap them if they don't comply with the rules of the game. What the hell is this, a collar? Yes, it's a collar of some sort. And who are you? Carlo. Obviously you started out with a script and you have changes about the script. Certainly Only minor changes game. because of the fact that we, uh, let's say we lost one of our cast due to a conflict. Yes, we did, we with another knife. If you down. did, you with another knife, another we did knife. We, we did ordered it, Rob. People. Don't do that. Not now. We did. Tell me a little bit about the production on this film. What production? <laughs> okay, next question. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> well, when you're looking for production, I mean, it's just a low budget. Exactly. After a short night of sleep, we're back in the studio here. With Kid this time, we're going to find out his story about the whole project. Is that what you call it? Project. I can think of some other synonyms, but nonetheless, where do you want to start? Where the hell are you? I don't know how to put on fucking covers. Fucking cold. Wow. Well, okay, so Carlo jumps in automatically and tries to brighten up your day a little bit. With his. Uh, Italian stallion ways, which, uh, yeah. <laughs> and the name's Carlo, not Mark. So now we're going to get to directing. I understand that you're both directing. You're the writer. And the casting director and the dialogue coach. Uh, that's four hats. Four hats. <laughs> so where does uh, the dunce hat fit in? 
Mm. <laughs> no, I guess what do you mean? No. <laughs> oh, I got it done. We didn't have. I know that. But that was great. Life. You can't change it. But I'm just saying. Looks don't great. Let it happen again. That's all looks I'm saying. Looks great. It looks great. I'm, I'm though, gonna do Rob. what it takes to make this movie, Rob. Yeah. Period. Yeah. <laughs> uh, same thing. I I got on board with Rob. Uh, Rob asked my help if we want to co-direct, and so that's how I came on board. So I was excited to do it. Um, that's what I want. My passion in this industry is to write and direct. So, is uh, I said, sure, let's do it. What the fuck? When the hell? Where's Mark? I can keep you warm. Ricardo's a gigolo when he wakes up a gigolo too. He sees these gorgeous women, and that's why he makes that comment to Gina first off. He, you know, he hasn't missed, skipped a beat. He's still a gigolo. He's still he's a gigolo. Abducted with strangers. He sees hot chicks, and he's still in, in, in his element. When the hell? Where am I? Harry started off being a Vietnam vet first which was a great dy dynamic character we needed, but then now we went back to reverted a little bit younger, we made him like a Persian Gulf War veteran type thing, so. No, Iraqi. Um, Iraqi. Well, either way, yeah, Persian Gulf, I think, Iraq, whatever. What's with all that yakking over there? I'm trying to get some sleep. God. Tell me about the first day of filming. How was it? How early did you guys get there? What, you're talking about here or at the recent location? Got the stuff that we needed to put plastic around the whole place. When I looked through the camera, it actually looked like a padded, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can't even say it. Padded a cell. padded cell. <laughs> Anyways, it came down the first day. Rob got all the actors together. I was on another set working. And oh, that's where the that. conflict came, where they didn't like the location the actors didn't. So that became our first uh, stepping stone to get past. Yeah, well, prior like to that, Jazz, huh? I did about... Six run-throughs with the cast as dialogue coach, six times through the script. Well, uh, tell me about your character and how it went bad from there. Well, how it went bad from there? The script. The script sucks, man. I mean, my God. Every piece of dialogue I'm sweating over only because it's, I memorized it and I thought to myself, how do I punch this up? Because it's going to have to be punched up. And now I've memorized all the crap. What if I just go with the crap on film? What about the actor conflicts with scheduling? How's that going? Yeah, we um, we had some conflicts. Uh, first off, uh, it was going pretty smooth. We shot two, three solid days. Um, then the next day coming up, uh, which was this past Thursday, we had a location conflict. So that's what we had to scrap that. We weren't sure when we were going to be able to pick this back up. Uh, we thought maybe we'd have to wait till after the holidays and everything else. But now last minute we said, well, let's try to shoot this Saturday and Sunday. We got the location back, but now we have active conflicts, so live and learn. <laughs> A strange twist has happened. Last night everything was great. Some people have left. Let's find out what happened. Let's ask Rob. Jazz is history. That's it. <laughs> I'm not saying another word now. He's gone. <laughs> First day you guys were on set together. How did that turn out? Turned out okay. Mm. How about you? How were the eggs and coffee that morning? <laughs> no craft service, unfortunately. We said low, no budget. Um, no, when I when I jumped on, Rob and the gentleman not here today, our DP, Doug Smith, uh, jumped in the first half of the night, and they started off with it, and they got all the establishing shots and everything else. I jumped in the last half when Doug had to leave to pick up the rest of the evening. Um, so when I got in there, things were already rolling. Uh, I think it was really going well, I guess, and they got the first couple shots, like they said, establishing a shot of them waking up, uh, mainly because all these people have been abducted, and they were brought to this location against their will, so they wake up, and it's kind of obscure, they're a little freaked out, wonder what's going on and everything else, and uh, that's how the tone is set, and um, then the other characters start getting more and more freaked out, and you know, wonder what's going on, and... As they woke up. As they woke up, yeah, one by one. Wow. If I could be so lucky, two at the same time. Fuck you. Two at the same time, and then that Eddie happens to hear that and says, well, maybe we can have a foursome. And that's where the conflict starts with him and Eddie. Well, basically uh, because... Because they... Carlo has the women and the money, and that's what Eddie wants. Hey, you're making a foursome. Do you feel coming into a project, 
are you more standoffish? You don't want to step on people's toes, or do you come right in and throw in your ideas? And no, I come in and throw my ideas. Rob knows that. <laughs> we butt ahead a few times on ideas and the creative processes and everything else. Uh, but you know, the bottom line, this is he wrote the screenplay, but it's George's idea. So it's it should be all a team effort. Uh, but when it comes down to directing, you have to know on the set that the script's going to change uh, according to the director's liking, or whatever else whatever works best at that moment, everything else, and, that, and we all have to be able to be ready for that. All right. He brought me on. Now, no, this is his no, movie. No, 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 no. This no. is his I movie. Asked, I asked for this you. This is his movie. I you're, still, you're still missing this, Rob. I asked. You're still so fucking obsessed and attached to that script. At this level, we like to try to keep it as much as possible, and the writer would like to stay more attached and keep it more to what he wrote, of course. Um, so there's, you know, a few small conflicts on dialogue changes and certain things that maybe I thought might, not necessarily better, but might work more conducive to that for that shot. And I definitely don't want to step on anybody's toes, but I'm not afraid to step up and you know up to the plate and hit a home run if I need to. So. It's his idea. I asked. It's his movie. I asked for you. Okay. He makes this, a decision. He makes a decision. Ego, guys. Not you. Just drop it. No. Not you. Because the actors are not you. Yeah, yeah, so for you, um, <clears throat> how many pages have we shot? You'd have to speak to him right now. <laughs> um, first. Uh, Day or two, we well, first day we shot probably up to about 10, 15 pages, um, sporadically and everything else. Then, because of schedule conflicts of the actors, uh, the second day we lost a few people, so I picked up and shot the ending, uh, last 20, 20, 30 pages, whatever. And um, that way we got that scene in of the last two characters that were alive, their fight, uh, he kills her, and then the ending where he's tormented alone with these dead rotting bodies for a week, the lights are out, he's going crazy, he doesn't know what to do, can't get out of the room, and you know, basically he takes his life at the end. So um, I shot that on the second day and got as much as I can coverage wise to at least utilize it, we don't waste any time basically, so. Hey, you making a foursome. I get it kid, from the looks of you, you are much too young. And. You couldn't possibly hang with the Italian stallion here. Oh, fuck you, asshole. <laughs> I'm older than <sighs> you know. And I've had more women than you can possibly imagine. Oh, I can't imagine. It's not much of one when it comes to you. Besides, you couldn't be any more than, uh, what? 20? Inches? Well, man. You're getting close. <laughs> Does that make you gay or me? <laughs> One of our most dynamic characters we have is uh, Nancy. Uh, she's borderline schizo and OCD. Um, Tourette's. Yeah, we, we were wanting to do Tourette's, but we haven't really filmed it yet. Um, we, I, we don't know if that was really pushing the envelope too much. And uh, so I think... You know, as long as Rob's okay with it, we've down Tony just to big OCD, which means she was lit on her shirt, dust, blood in her hands, all that kind of stuff. She really freaks out. What the hell is this? What the hell is going on? Oh my God. Look at this contaminated floor. This filthy, disgusting floor. Who's in charge here? Huh? Who's in charge? Hi, we're back for another interview with Nancy today, with the rest of the script here. Let's see what she can do to it. Well, I have to tell you, Nancy in the role of, um, in the movie God's Game is a juicy role, and I had to take it, and I beat out quite a few girls. Um, Nancy has Tourette's Syndrome, uh, also OCD. But they decided throughout, the, as we were filming, that we're going to drop the Tourette's Syndrome. But a lot of my lines in Tourette's Syndromes, you blur out, fucking asshole, shithead, and it was a lot of inner uh, passion, which I loved. But we stuck with the OCD, very um, anal, very um, juicy and full of life. You guys have two days to finish. Uh, what page are you guys on exactly right now, and how many more do you have to shoot? That is not possible, because <laughs> everybody... That any of the actors have things coming up because of what the situation is, is that first of all we stopped, then we go on it, then we stopped again, and now all of a sudden we're doing it again. And they've already made plans 
Nancy's role is a, a lead part from beginning to end and I'm here to stay so Nancy is ready to go and start working again. Do you know what page you're on right now? No, I have no idea what page we're on. Uh, yes, uh, except for <laughs> we got, you know, except we started with the first about 10 to 15 pages, so I'd say around page 10, 12 we'll start with, and then we'll go up to uh, where we left off the second day of shooting, which was the ending, which is about page 56. Page so anywhere from 10 to page 10 to 56 is where we need to get, get done. In two days? Yes. Oh my God, where's, where's my cigarettes? Oh my God, shit. Where the hell are my cigarettes? I had a pack last night. So now that they're all awake, they're the all games awake. begin. The games begin. Okay, wait a second. I had a fucking pack of cigarettes and now they're gone. Did someone fucking steal them when I was sleeping? What is this shit? What is going on here? Now I read the script, and in the beginning you were already awake when the first person woke up. Now, was there a reason why you didn't reference as somebody else waking up as opposed to the first person that wakes up, signifying that you were never asleep? Hmm. You know, that's a really good question. I, I don't know. I mean, I didn't write the script, but, you know, I portrayed the part. I think I'll probably get some sort of an award for, for my performance for that part. But I didn't technically write the script, but I acted on it. So... In terms of that, I can't say why I was the first one awake. Uh, maybe I was awake the whole time because I didn't put any chloroform on myself. All right, we're back with <coughs> Chaz. We were here last night. We obviously tried a couple things, see how it went. Mm -hmm. I walked into the interview today, and I'm telling you, it was worse than yesterday. Tell me a little bit about what happened. Uh, basically, we we also we once again did not see eye to eye on creative processes. No, but the actors. It's not your decision. You. It's his the decision. The actors are gonna Period. walk in and you don't have the fighting. decision to fire. They're gonna walk Period. right. You don't out. think so? Nope. nope. Then the fire. script can end right here, Chaz. Um, basically, I was asking him simply was to be a little more flexible and lenient with the script. Um, there's gonna be some changes. There's gonna be some improv. Come on, Kev. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Um, okay, let me do it. Shoot, uh, shoot the whole thing. So yeah, it got into a heated argument. It was about uh, uh, a certain prop a knife that was in the script that he wrote. Have to. No, he has to go down. Yeah, he's gonna go down. Oh, okay, perfect. Go down. Now you get close up of the knife. You get a couple of shots. So he had a problem with that because then it became down that we weren't following the script, letter for letter, word for word. And that's why I explained to him. I said, please be more flexible and 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 more open minded about the scripts because it's gonna change from time to time. Like right now, it's changing. This is crazy. Look at this disgusting fly! All these germs! Oh my god, all these germs all over me! It's so disgusting! Do you think everything shot so far has gone according to your plan? No. 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 And what about you? <laughs> um, <clears throat> I think it's coming out good. Uh, I think with the stress of being having actors to memorize that many pages to try to get that much coverage in, in the least amount of time, there has to be some improv, so they're going to have to make up some lines, make up some actions and stuff to stick in there, so that's probably what he means by it didn't go quite in according to plan or by the script. I think so far it's coming out great, and I think it's keeping the storyline of what Rob wrote. Uh, but yeah, of course, a lot of dialogue and a lot of things are probably going to change because there's going to be a lot of improv. You know, the actors are just going to have to step it up, and if you know, it's a lot of lines to remember, you, know, you got to know, you got to know on a normal set. Uh, let's take example on a TV show; they only cover five to six pages a day, and that's a 10, 12 hour day. We don't have that. We have 72 pages to cover in, what, four or five days? So, that's the example. <laughs> this is going to be pathetic. I mean, I don't care if you paid a buck fifty at the video store. You're going to laugh your ass off at this. Feel like you've been ripped off. Yeah, but most of the dialogue, if you think about it, we're not supposed to be stepping on. So, we can actually cut and have them memorize the line, say their lines and do whatever it is. And then we cut there, and then whoever's the next person can say their lines. If there's somebody can remember what the next line is for the next person, then we didn't have to cut. But if we have to cut, then make it necessary to cut. So instead, you would of, say, instead of changing the dialogue, instead of ad-libbing, instead of going over what the character actually is. I mean, every other line in Rob's script, it seems like, is misspelled. <laughs> you know? And, and just, just the sentence construction is a mess. And 
How many times can you misspell the word loser? So one thing that Eddie had mentioned is uh, misspellings in the script. I think every script's going to have misspelled words. In yeah, it. but verbatim, he said the word loser. Mm -hmm. How many times can you misspell the word loser? And then he said it takes one to misspell it wrong. No. Well, I guess that's why he's no longer here. Contextually, as far as who he is, what he is, broadly, not too bad, but the dialogue defines the character, and that's where I struggled. I'm thrilled to play the part of Nancy. What do you mean, thrilled to stay? What happened? Well, I have to tell you, I find it amusing and very funny. We've had the weirdest things happen on this film. I have to tell you, half the cast already stepped away from the film, but me, Nancy, I'm ready to kill off some people. Um, or be killed, and that's really a great uh, way to put it. Oh my god, what is going on here? Hey, lady, take it easy. Take it easy? You're telling me to take it easy? Who are you to tell me to take it easy? I don't know. What do you think the hardest part about connecting with this character was? Not as an outline, the outline was fine. But like, from my standpoint of characterization, have, it's like, you have these lines, and they're basically, you know, it's the setup without the punchlines when I'm dealing with her. Hey, what? We got white walls. Is this a funny farm? What is this? I don't know what this is. Take it easy, you're telling me. Yeah, yeah. nobody. Right. I felt like he could be, you know, a true psychotic, let's put it that way, which I always find interesting. Just the sense that there are extreme emotions in this character, frustrations with life. Perhaps he's the killer. Hi, we're back with Courtney now. She's playing Gina in the film God's Gift. No, that's not the film. God's Game. Sorry <laughs> about that. So, Gina, tell me a little bit about your character. Um, well, I play a 27-year-old stripper with large breasts. And, um, I am killed by, um, Kevin, who plays Steve. Jumping uh, from this film and doing a film with Will Smith next, um, we're going to do a little thing he's been calling me. Um, we're going to do a little thing, kind of a, a playoff on like a good guy, bad guy, cop thing. It was amazing to see how many people in this script, um, our characters, each and every one is so uh, enticing to the audience. I've been trying to quit the nasty habits anyway, so it's okay. But look at these germs. And yet, they just stepped away because of the behind-the-scenes stuff that went on. Um, like I said, it still boils down to the time constraint. With the time we have allotted for this film, no, that's not possible, I don't think. Not for the uh, time? No, it's not. Yeah, that's why yeah, I say that's we, we, if we, we had more time, more time then, yeah. yes. Then we'd have time to be able to let them go step-by-step step and make sure they got the lines correct. But yeah, he agree, I agree with him. It's, it's, you know, with this time constraint, you know, it's, it's tough to have expected on the actors. You know, they're doing a lot already. They're doing a good job. If they have to improv, we have to go along with it and just keep on moving. I can't handle it. The germs are on me. I'm trying to... Look at the lift box! Hey, 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 the lift box hey, on me! Hey, uh, hey, I had no fucking idea of anything myself, okay? Oh, my All God. I was going to do... All I was... Hey. All I, all I was going to do is offer you a cigarette. Is that okay? You got a cigarette. So we're going along with the man of many colors, many hats. Uh, do you do script supervising, or is that something you feel would be needed on set? Oh, it's always needed on set to keep people. But you see, the thing is, is where we were at that time. Uh, script supervisor was the, probably the lowest on the list, considering we needed something else. As the writer of the film, obviously there may be some changes that need to be in there. How do you propose going about doing this with the time you have left? Changes. Huh? Then do it. Right. That's his script, not no, his, yours. No, it's my script. You just write it for him. It's, you wrote it for him. It's his idea. You can't go anywhere. You still keep missing that, Rob. It can't go anywhere until I say see, so, Chad. You, can't, you keep, keep missing the idea that it's his story. I you wrote, wrote it for him. I wrote it. You wrote it for him. I have, I have every so right to... So you're screenplay by it. That's I it. have every right to rip this fucking thing up and it's over That's with, That's between Chad. you two. We put in five That's between you two. Not me. And then it's over with. Like I said, I've already had to make a change with one of the characters. That character went from 68 to early 30s. The original one, like I said, was supposed to be a veteran of Vietnam. We lost him, brought down to 32, and now we got someone from Iraq. 
I don't know anything about either war. Personally, I've never been in there. <laughs> I have. And so I had to come up with some sort of believable story for this character for a reason why that he would compel to the feeling guilty of take all their pain away from them, from the guilt that he did, from the guilt that he's been carrying all these years. Mm. And which guilt is that? Well, he, his character initially uh, is an alcoholic, and when he was over in Iraq, ended up driving a jeep, drunk, murdering, or killing, I should say, a, a pregnant woman who was walking with two children. Managed to kill the woman, most you know, pregnant. He got caught because of the fact that she happened to get, grab a hold of his dog tags when he went to check her out. People were coming, and he just took off. And at the same time, she still had a hold of his dog tags, but he still would have felt that guilt, even though if he didn't get caught, he still would have that guilt with him. Nice. Heartwarming. Definitely. And now he's locked away in this room and has to kill again. So how many people did you actually kill in this film? Well, technically, only two myself, but, I mean, actually, I killed everybody. What is this collar around my neck? What is this fucking dog collar around my neck? Oh, <coughs> it's so tight! Look at the lint on me, I can't handle this! Hey, lint. you! Lint! You gonna be okay over there? Really? Yeah. So, you wake up in this uh, room, right. and you assume you're sleeping next to your boyfriend? I knew that I had got off of work the night before, and I was um, mugged by somebody. But yeah, when I wake up, everything's a little bit foggy, and I see all these people that I don't know, and I'm in this scary room, and so it's pretty freaky. I saw that you were searching to check if your panties were still on. That was someone else. Oh my god! <laughs> Sorry, wrong character. I thought you were the dancer stripper, though. <laughs> I don't know. It's very interesting in writing, but um, no, I'm actually not. I don't do that part. So the uh, producer has informed me that you have two days to shoot this, or he's cutting the project completely. <laughs> so uh, what do you plan to do about that? <clears throat> well, if that's all we got, then we're just going to go ahead and try to do the best we can. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to give up on it. I never give up on anything. You know, do a little Clint Eastwood style, you know, one take wonders and move on, as long as the shot's good, and, now, you know. Now, as a writer, you're going to be hurting the worst out of this deal just because you might have to lose some of your script. So how does that make you feel? That all depends on what's cut out. Well, don't you have the choice of that? That's my point. I do have the choice. I still say, I say what stays. Because I am also the director as well. Good point. Two directors. Um, well, uh, originally, I guess, I mean, I'm not really sure because one person was directing, then another person was directing. Chaz was directing, some guy named Tim Tim, Rob, George. Now we end up with a ripped script, but we're still shooting, so that means we're, we're troopers. So tomorrow are you guys going to direct together? Probably not. You yeah, probably not. He gave me a phone call said he's out of the project. I don't know what that meant. Uh, he hasn't explained it to me. So uh, I don't know what's going on with him. So we started off as supposed to being together. Um, like I said, the first night I brought on a friend to help a little bit with a little stress relief, which is my friend Doug Smith, and he went, I gave him DP credit. Uh, but he said that Rob kind of stepped back that night didn't really step up to direct and up to the plate, and so he carried it pretty much the night, and I carried the second half of the night. I gave Rob the choice if he wants to go back in and finish after Doug left. But to me, that sounded like he just didn't want to direct for some reason, uh, or maybe felt he couldn't or whatever, maybe it was overbearing, which is, you know, hey, we're all human, you know. We know, because we often know that there's two different kind of creativities. There's the writing and the directing creativity, and they're totally separate. One's a thought process and one's a visual, and it, it's tougher than it seems. Come on, man, there's got to be some kind of emotion. How do you write if you have zero emotion to anything anybody says? Mistakes happen when you start typing away. You know that.
especially in scripts. You know, but I knew I was ready to take the challenge. Uh, maybe he wasn't. I don't know. I can't speak for him. I'm just speculating because I haven't heard much from him. But I got a phone call tonight when I was on set saying he's trying to back out of the project. And I don't know what he meant by it. So. So why did you step out on the project, Rob? Because someone's stepping on the script. And how does that make you feel? Explain to me your choices and why you're making these choices to pull out. Well, I've already explained to Chaz not to change the script. First day he read it, he started writing in it, making changes. I pointed out some of the changes that were not necessary because if he had read it, he wouldn't have made those decisions to put those in there. So that was okay. And then eventually he started making more changes and cutting dialogue and I spoke to him and I had asked him not to do it. Just leave it as it is. Everybody knows their lines. Everybody likes it just the way it is. And he said, okay. Then he started doing it again. So I'd bringing in a different ending now. And I said, Chaz, leave the script alone. I asked you to come in here to help me in my place to direct from the script, not to change the script, but to direct it as I would direct it from the script, as it is. You're always gonna have, that's why you have people going through it, fixing your stuff. Nobody's just fixing any of my stuff. It's just the way I type and that's it. I even did a spell check. Granted, even a spell check didn't even catch it either. Oh, Microsoft failed you. Okay. Calm down, calm down. Forever. Yeah, I, I, I'm beginning to wonder, dunce cap or a straight jacket? Please, calm down. Too much light. Or is it just a cigarette? Are you a nicotine addict? <laughs> hey! You gonna be alright over there? Because it looks like you're freaking losing it to me. Are you talking to me? Forget it. Daily, scripts change for whatever reason, good, bad, or indifferent. It just has to happen. That's all there is to it. Um, and the majority of changes going on now is due to the actors. If they can't remember the lines and such a time constraint, I'm saying, you know what, improv, go with something, whatever you feel. He said I changed the ending. I don't know what he's talking about changing the ending. Just the fact that you wanted Billy Tim to do the wiggly handling. And oh, the same. oh, oh. I was adding a security guard in there because at the very end he has a walkie-talkie. Hold on. Who's, who's Billy Tim? Hi, we're back here, this time with Billy Tim. We're going to ask him a few questions about what happened that strange day. Billy, welcome to the show. Well, hi, how are you? Excellent. I saw a little bit of the clip there Did with you? you in the tractor. Nice, very nice. It's my vehicle. So I'm guessing you parked it out front, or is it still towed? Uh, no, I park it out front because uh, I only drive it only on occasions. You know, when I'm by myself or with somebody. Um... He's uh, an actor also, but he was, he, we brought him on uh, the other night that we didn't get to shoot. He was going to help PA, maybe be a lookout for us. What was your role exactly in what you were doing? Yeah, I don't really uh, know too much about it. Uh, the PA is where you uh, help the actors organize the scenes and bring them in, call them in and out, and sort of help each other with the production. Yeah! I look at the ending. Uh, just at the very last part where there's a dialogue of a voiceover of a radio uh, after the lights came back off, everybody's dead. Uh, the lights come on and this maintenance man or whoever he is was coming around with the radio saying, you know, is there anybody, you know, the power's been out for a week, is there anybody in there? Um, the only change I made, and I told Rob when I got there that night, is that I made that a dispatch voiceover on a radio of a security guard coming in and then the security guard will respond to the radio back on his radio and um, saying that, well, I don't know, I just got here, I'm going to check out this one uh, storage room, I'll get back to you. And I, helped, I thought that helped support the ending, to that it was mysterious, because now we know what's behind those doors, but the security guy doesn't, the lights are finally on, now he's going to go do his rounds. So I stuck in my friend Billy Tim to play that part, just from the back, not face, but just a body, to show he's about to open a door, and we cut right there. So who's the guy that brought you on? I'm, I must have missed it. My friend, he's the director on this show, and uh, he's kind of fucked up, but uh, I figured, what the hell? <laughs> yeah. What's with the blanket in the middle of the room? I guess. It's 
It's for the two women here and myself. Harlow, is it? Mm -hmm. Let's get your mind out of the gutter and figure out what's going on here, okay? Yeah. First, let's introduce ourselves. I'm Steve Gates. Like I said, Steve, he's the one who started the, you know, kidnapping everybody for his own thesis because of the fact that he just wanted to initially see how different types of people, different ages, would take uh, the same stress in one room where they have no way of getting or leaving. Okay, did he write the computer program? Oh, he's the one who made the computer. He made the computer. And you? I'm Carlo here. I'm Jenny. Uh, we finally made it to our most unique character, Jenny. Jenny, tell me a little bit about your character. Well, I don't really know much about her, except I know I'm really pretty, and oh, I'm an actress, and I. I think I kiss Carlo. Mm -hmm. Yes, I kiss Carlo. And that's about it, I think. Harry here. What's up with these stupid collars, though? Seriously. I have no idea. All I know is it was there when I woke up. And you? Eddie. What the script did have, from my perspective, in the writing of the dialogue, were extreme outbursts I could work with. Violent outbursts. That's how I would interpret them. And I felt like I could work from there. It was going pretty well when we were shooting, actually. It's Nancy. And I gotta get this collar off my neck. What's up? I've never seen such outrageous things on a set. Hey! Is anybody out there? See, Nanny. Hey. Is anybody out there? Hey! Chaz, if you if you had read the script, that wouldn't have been that would have been possible. Because in the script, Carlos is peeping through the hole. Mm -hmm. Eddie says, "What do you see?" Mm -hmm. Carlos says, "I see the door and the reflection of the mirror with bars in front of it." Is anybody out there? What do you see? Anything? Nothing. Just the reflection of the door and the mirror. Now, why would he check a door that had bars in front of it when you couldn't open it? Good point. There, there'll be... If it's a security like, gate bar, if that's what you're talking about, then there's still a way to get in. It has to be. Why would the door be there if there's no way to access it? Because with the computer out, there is no electricity. But the and electricity the came back on yeah, the end. And it's going to take time for the computer to start up. You thought of this whole computer scheme. The god, if you will. Tell me a little bit about the uh, computer. Okay, well, the computer was actually, I took parts from an Atari 2600, uh, old video game. Um, took parts from the controller, took some stuff out of my garage, and I put together this computer that um, all of a sudden just became a monster on its own and took over the whole thing. And, and the computer actually, in the end, it, um, it results, I don't know if I'm going to spoil the end of the movie, but it results in my own death. My own death is because of something that I created. But there's still a lock on the outside of that door. No, there, there are bars diagonal going across the door. Now, which door is this? Let me interrupt here. What door? The door that leads into the room itself. So, the, wh whoever the character is that put everybody in there mm -hmm. had to open a That's bar right. to get into this door to no, bring the people in. Exactly. No, he opened the door. The computer is the one who set the bars. Set the bars. To lock. So the bars were there to begin with, the computer sets it to lock it. Correct. So no security guard, even with the power no. out, can get in there. No, 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 none. The computer has control over those bars. So, so it would be kind of senseless to go and, you know, and check the door. You, nobody can get in. But it would be senseless for a human being not to be able to open it either. From the outside, not from the inside. From the outside. Be, the bars that cross it, Chaz, that's my point. But that doesn't make sense. That's the problem. Why would you have it, bars diagonally across a door? That's what you're trying to say, right? To keep people out as right. well as to keep people in. Right. But there always should be some sort of way of accessing it from a human being outside to get through those bars, regardless of the computer. Because the computer, if he shut down with the electricity, it means he lost control. 
That's right. Right. That's the whole point. So it should be accessible. That's the whole point. Um, I think I need to go to the trailer now. Carlo! Carlo! Brett! Okay, well I got this here. But why would a security guard, just to be on Rob's side, why would a security guard open up a door that he's not monitoring anyways? Because if, it's, well, if we the power has been out for, wasn't. how long was the power out for? A week. A week. So he's going to check everything. Just days. So why did it take him ten days, whatever, to check this door that, that was he hasn't question. checked yeah, as opposed you know, He to gave the time limit, the week. I thought why a week? Long. Why wouldn't he check it the next day when power went out? I changed it initially to days. I didn't give any specific <clears> days, but initially I said a week. But I, that's why I changed it to as, just certain, just as, you know, as days went by. It doesn't say exactly how many days now. Oh, anyways, um, well, I'm a big movie star, and I'm actually so big that I have a body double standing in for me right now, if you can't tell. And I'm actually talking over via satellite, because I'm just that fabulous. We lost some actors, you know. So, to cool down, I walked away and, you know, let things simmer down for a little bit. I went to go check my mail in Hollywood, and I got the phone call to say, come back, you know, we'll, we'll pick this back up, so here I am. So uh, today I heard you express that you wanted to just drop the ball and walk. I don't know who to blame for this. I, things happen. Sometimes things are not meant to be. That's how I felt about this project. We tried, we tried, we tried. How much crap can go down with one project before eh, you give up, especially without any budget whatsoever? But obviously we're still pushing forward and making it work. I don't know. I mean, at some point, either I'm going to be laughed out, not that I'm... You know, uh, out of the biz or I'm going to be locked up. I mean, there's, there's a certain frightening aspect to this. How far to go? You have to trust those behind the camera, and I've lost my trust. I'm the loser, huh? I like to say I'm going to write a script using seven different people, seven different characters coming with seven different dialogue. He couldn't even write the first page. But it was fun. I liked it. Did that make sense? Sure. Uh, before I go to the next one, is she the one that takes the shit? Hey guys, hey. is Jenny supposed to take a shit? Character-wise, yes, but physically, no. Oh shit. What's wrong? All of a sudden, one of the characters has to go to the bathroom. What they do Male is or female? female? Female. Female, okay. So what she does is she goes behind the blankets, covers herself, covers herself up. She's looking up in the camera saying, this will be the last time you ever see me like this. You know, crap. And, man, what the hell did you kill? So sorry, <laughs> a woman's got to do what a woman's got to do. It's Jamie who does it. I didn't like that scene. You didn't like that scene? No, it's no because he wasn't directing that one. <laughs> no, 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 I had nothing to do with that. We haven't got that apart anyhow. Oh, no, no, right. I, just, I thought the first crapping. He doesn't like Yeah, it. it's just too soon, I guess, for that. I don't know. It's not um, too soon. It's been time. It's gone by. It's been, they've been sleeping. It's still the, the same day. It's, it's the same day, day, but still yeah, hours later. the restroom the same day. Yeah, I know, but I mean, I said, well, I just said, people, just to mix it up. How many people do you know that don't wake up in the morning and have to go to the bathroom? I know that. Okay. But I'm saying, she has, but but I'm the, saying the only mix up I said is you have somebody crapping later on, too. So you have two craps. Yeah. I said do one pee and one crap. And that way you can at least mix it up a little bit on the bowel movements. She, you know, Jenny could pee and make it show a little wet on the blanket, and then later on someone has to take a crap. And that's all I asked. I said, just mix it up a little bit. He wanted two, two craps for some reason. I don't know why. Well, at least it's not three. Yeah. No, because, <laughs> first of all, the second crap is during the next day. Yes, I understand that. Then okay. I can see. See, I, and I told him before, if you're put in this kind of a situation as a normal human being, and you're already frightening anything else, I think the last thing you're going to think about is crapping. And maybe pee, but not crap. Now, second day, yes, after things have gone through and everything else, Nancy's the only one left with Steve, and then she has to go to the bathroom because now it's them two left, and she has a different plot line in there later on about trying to talk him out of killing each other. Let's die together or something like that, whatever. But, you know, I can understand that on the second day. So first day, let somebody pee instead of crap. Well, that's my own point. Okay, now I've, um, I've read and heard that when a person dies, mm -hmm. they, they have a bowel movement. They crap that's anyways. True. That's true. So uh, We didn't put that in there. So. No, you don't have to. It's just like if somebody dies, they're dead. You don't have to say that their heart doesn't stop beating or their brain doesn't stop. Sure, functioning. they they crap. So, but if you die by so it already smells. If you die by a sudden, unexpected death, the more normal thing to do this is this is not unexpected. To they them. Are more, yes, not, they are. They all are unexpected. Dude, you can't be much of a gigolo if you can't see what's going on here, Romeo. What? She's got to go to the damn bathroom. All right. 
Well, this is all about the crap. I mean, if he's showing them taking the crap going to the bathroom, then like, you're not you're showing it. Up, so you're not showing it. They're only saying it, Chaz. Yeah, yeah. So a, a crap. I mean, it could be a vomit. It could be anything. Well, a vomit's great because she bit the guy's tongue off. Of course, she she would gag. Yeah. You know. So that's. that's I mean, normal. personally, I don't see the difference between crapping and pissing or whatever. It doesn't matter. I, I was already trying to mix it up. That's all I was trying to do. Show one of each bowel movement to say they went to the bathroom. Oh, I, I can see that. Sorry about that, Jenny. It's quite all right. You got to hurry though, because I have somewhere to be. Yeah, you got to take a shit. Excuse me. Well, I mean, character-wise. Um, excuse me. I'm not going to put up with this type of questions. These are not the type of questions that I answer. So, as the writer, you have this written out that somebody speaks over the loudspeaker to them. No, it's over a walkie-talkie. A walkie-talkie. No, it doesn't give any specific of who is actually over the, out there with the walkie-talkie. It doesn't say whether it's a maintenance. It doesn't say whether it's That's a That's all I was trying to do. I established that. But don't. I'm asking. See, you know, you're then where did the walkie-talkie come from? Could be anybody. It could be anybody. That's my right, point. Right. So I just have stuck anybody in there. That's why I made well, that's it That's why you don't do that. It's, it's just a voice and shot, Rob. It's you're, the same thing as when you're we not had establishing Doug. anything from behind. That's the same thing we had as Doug carrying the bodies in. It made it look like it was going to be Steve. We don't know who it was, but we showed bodies coming in. That was establishing shot. Now, did the same thing as Chaz. If somebody knocks on that door, do you know who it is? Not until we open it. You know, and it can't be open because the bars are still there. You only hear the noise from a walkie-talkie. That's it. But all bars of any kind of security door can be opened by humans. No, not in this case, Jess. But the power went out on the computer, which means he would have it's lost control locked. of function. No, it's still locked. All right, I'm tired of standing here twiddling my fucking thumbs waiting for something to happen. We need to figure out what the fuck is going on or at least try and find some goddamn way out of here. Yeah, she's right. Anyone got any uh, ideas? So what exactly happened in the bunker, as you put it? I found the mood in the bunker, let's put it that way. I was uh, enough alcohol in the bunker, it, it just went off. We were doing good work down there. Until Billy Tim and his old man showed up and just uh, foobarred the whole thing. Kind of a neat hat you got there. The uh, bird season, you know, is out. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think about this movie and how it's going to go? Well, uh, I think it's a little off the wall, sort of like the director. But uh, I think it's going to be fun. Uh, a lot of people will ha seem to be into it more so than others. Um, I can't really tell you how good it's going to be yet, but... The other location that where, where we was at was kind of messed up anyways, and this is much better. You know, he, he's really good, and I think he'll finish the film. You know he's only got today and tomorrow to do it. <laughs> yeah, and he owes me burgers for that, too. <laughs> so, uh, do you have some words to say to the producer? Fuck you. This project's been complete dog shit from day one. I paid more for my fucking pants than you paid for this movie, man. What was the last thing you did last night, Gina? What the fuck does that have to do with us being here? No. If I read him right, it's to find out if we have anything in common. Common denominator. Anything about our abductions is similar or different. Anything that'll give us something to go on. Now with other directors and films that I've seen, they some directors will shoot more than they'll actually use. Oh, a lot more than they doesn't? Use. So, you know, just because Chaz shot the shot doesn't mean it has to be used. It's an idea that he was just putting in. That's my point. He you know, may he maybe a new thing is... He doesn't seem to be open to ideas. That's the problem. I, well, I, I, Honestly, wouldn't, I wouldn't sure. go there because I know I've written stuff and it's like... Well, no, I know, but that's the direct, that's from the director to the writer. I didn't write this. He, him and I co-wrote it before on some other scripts, and we went through stuff, and we collaborated together to make mm -hmm. sure the changes were good. But now that he wrote this, and I'm directing it, then that comes the thing where if I think there should be something that might help to interject, I'd like to be able to have the freedom to do that. Whether it makes the final cut, I'll still do it his but way also, but we can do two different place, versions. Chaz. You're in it's my It's not your place. place, it's his place. No, my place. His place. I. It's his story. I told you that no, before. No, I... Let's go to a commercial listen, break. Listen. No, no. Yeah. Yeah, well, 
the last thing I remember is I was getting off of, getting off of work and I was headed out my alley. That, that's the back way to my club. I always go that way. And then some asshole mugged me or jumped me, whatever. He put his hand over my mouth and I smelled, smelled chloroform. And then, and then I blacked out. And that's the last thing I can remember. But he, you know, it's, the problem is he didn't seem too lenient on the changes. But coming from a director to the writer, you know, we know that things are going to change. And we know this is the producer's original story. Um, he's, you know, he takes ownership because he wrote the script and the screenplay. But it wasn't his idea to begin with. The producer gave us a basis, base storyline, gave Rob the base storyline. And then, you know, Rob wrote the script. So when that happens, there's a story by and then there's a written by. So he wrote it. The story by was by the, the producer. So with that in mind, you know, there's certain ownerships, of course. But there's ownership by producer, by the writer, and by the director, and it has to be a team effort. I don't get a team feeling here from Rob because he keeps jumping on me and all these changes, and all I'm trying to do is give him some inputs of different outlooks of it. Well, I heard, you, I heard you say earlier that you guys have both <coughs> co-worked on writing. Mm -hmm. Okay, I can understand on that point where you're both putting in ideas. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a solely he wrote this one, mm -hmm. and you're directing. Right. So the rules change slightly. Now it's not, I understand where you're at because you've done it before, mm -hmm. there's a gray line. Right. Where you feel as though, okay, I've done it before, we can do it again. Yeah. And I'm understanding that now Rob here has written this one and he mm -hmm. kind of, this is his baby. Right. He wants to have like almost full control over it. No, not almost. <clears throat> total. He wants total control. Total control over it. I admit it. Waking up in here. Anything about our abductions is similar or different. What the hell does that have to do with us being in here? I was coming out of my agent's office last <clears throat> night. It must have been about half past nine. And then I woke up here with you guys. You know, you had to get into character. Tell me a little bit about your development in the morning to shooting. Well, I got up really early in the morning and I combed my hair and I had some English breakfast tea, and that's about it. That's all it takes me to get into character. That's how good I am. Because the thing is, is Chaz, when I asked you, first of all, I said to the producer, I said, do you mind if I brought in a friend of mine to help me direct this? He says, no, call him. So I called you. Mm -hmm. Now, <coughs> I called you because uh, I was working Mm, Tuesday, Tuesday and Wednesday. Right. I worked Monday. And that was for you to fill in for me, Chaz. Uh -huh. Right. Not take over the script. I did take over the script. You let Doug take over that night. You no, didn't I step, didn't. You didn't I step did. up to the plate, according to him. Who is Doug? Doug is the DP. Doug is the one Doug who shot the first. The DP. The DP. First. He's the one who shot the first night, most of it. I shot the and second. You were half. with him on the first night. Yes. He was inside the room. Okay. I was inside so he the knew room. you were in control. He was holding of the, the camera. He was. He was. Going with, uh, around with the camera, and I said, "Okay, fine. Let him shoot the sh shoot the uh, wide shots and all that." And granted, at times he would say, "You know, okay, where are we going? Who's who says what? Whose lines is next?" And I would tell him whose line was next. Well, was he changing anything, or was he just actually doing what you wanted? Was he, direct theme? He was doing what was coming from the script. He didn't okay. say to change anything. Okay, and that's where you wanted Chaz to fit in. He's yeah. doing exactly that role. Yes. Not to change the script, but since I wasn't going to be there, is to <clears> go by the script, because as I explained earlier, it's like a composer who also conducts a music, he can't make it, and he has somebody to compose it so that people can rehearse this, you know, the music, and all of a sudden he says, oh no, we've got to change this, let's change this. He has no right to change that composer's stuff, just like Chaz has no right to change it without asking. I don't like this movie. I don't think I want to be in it anymore. As a matter of fact, I don't even know why my agent signed me up for this shit. That's what I'm trying to figure out here, Eddie. I just need everyone to tell me, is there anything, any reason why someone would want to do something like this to you? Are you expecting all of us to spill the beans on ourselves? If it means getting out of here alive, yes. I want everybody to walk out on their own two feet, all right? Steve, what makes you think we're not going to get out of here alive, let alone on our own two feet? 
Because I did not mean to say it that way. I, I, I don't know why I said it that way. It's, it's just the way it came out, all right? You know, I have a really strong feeling about uh, not getting out of here alive. I don't know what it is. It's something deep inside. Hey, man, why me first again, huh? Why not someone else? From the clips I saw, I noticed you were extremely passionate about your character. Did you find that any other characters might have gone equal, maybe above and beyond that? They might have caused some interesting notes? Well, you could say that. I, maybe it was my passion that uh, created other passions. I don't know if you're familiar or not, but um, Eddie has walked. He came in while you were gone, mm -hmm. and he took off. He's done with the project. He had nothing but bad things to say about the whole thing. Okay, I just got a couple more questions about your character. Uh, did you feel... Who the hell is directing this piece of shit? Well, um, that's his choice, I guess. Uh, I mean, like I said, we said it before, at this level of being a no, low to no budget, um, that's going to happen from time to time. Um, I wish him well. Best, best of luck. Break a leg, whatever he's got to do. If he didn't want to finish the project, that's fine. I guess we would just write him out. Well, I say we give him a chance. He's here. He's ready to come in and tell you that he's his long, your long-lost brother. And who's that? Eddie! Eddie's my long-lost brother? Yeah. I think he's already lost. All right. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is this? How did I get here? Why am I here? And why am I holding this piece of shit? So how do you feel about Eddie leaving so suddenly? I have to be truthful, Eddie pissed me off. Um, he is a major asset to the role of Nancy, so he's keeping me high and dry. He just chucked, you know, left, and that pisses me off. But he also is very young, you know, he's only 18, so I have to take that in account. He called me and said, hey, what's up? Uh, you're going to finish this movie, God's Game. I said, absolutely. Why wouldn't you? And he said, ah, you know, going back and forth on the cell phone. And I decided to just tell it like it is. He has to keep his ass in the game. I have to tell you, I'm pretty disappointed that Eddie decided to just head out the door. It really pissed me off. Uh, same with any other actors. They want to walk, too. They have the liberty and freedom to do that. You know, I, I know what that's like. I was in the military and we couldn't walk. You know, we were under contract. So, but in the civilian world, yeah, you can say I quit and walk away and everything else. But you, you have to suffer the consequences, you know. So, I wish him the best. So, sorry I didn't want to stick it out there, Eddie. But, um, you know, we're going to try to do what we can to finish this project. He is a great actor. His character works off of Nancy a lot. And we are the two kind of neurotic off-the-wall crazy characters, and I loved working off of him. Carlo, why don't you go first then? I can't think of anything offhand either. This could be something from your past experience. You sure you didn't piss someone off or dupe them? Well, the only thing I can think of happened several years ago. It happened when I was over in Paris. There was this gorgeous woman they're all gorgeous to you, Romeo, as long as they have the money. Any actor can walk if they want. It's their choice. Um, you know, we, we wish they would stay, but we're, we're going to push on because, you know, the, the, the old phrase in this business is the show must go on. And that's what the producer wants, and that's what we're going to give them. So we'll make do with what we have. As I was saying, one of my many encounters in life ended up infatuated with me. You see, I've got this mean tongue that never gets tired never hurts and it never wants to stop. Oh really? I can't even I can get <laughs> any woman several orgasms yeah. within the first yeah. minute Ooh. and a lot more after that. Oh. Nancy. Nancy is a Tourette's girl. She owns her own bake, uh, butcher shop. Butcher shop. So she's got the knives. Mm -hmm. Oh she's got the knives. She knows how to work the knives. She yeah. knows how to work the knives. Well, Nancy is a part of um, uh, the role in early 40s. And the other parts I would have loved to have played, they were young 20s. And I'm certainly not young 20s any longer. But I have to tell you, Nancy is the most passionate role. So to look at the script, I'm so happy I got Nancy because I am in the movie from beginning to end. Courtney, like I said, is uh, Gina, who is the uh, longtime female stripper, of course. Courtney Black. Okay. And... She, her character is actually one month pregnant. 
So I was talking with the director earlier, the writer of the script, uh, about how he chose people. He said you were solely upon your ass and tits, and no acting was involved at all. How do you feel about this? What the fuck was that? One month pregnant. Okay. And that's where this no, tie fits that's in the, with the... That's the change he made. Yes. Uh, it, it made it made <laughs> sense. Well, of course it does. I because liked it when he told me it. Okay. About the whole, so the guy killed a woman with right. a pregnant, and now the pregnant woman killed him. Great, right. great change. Yeah, 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 no, no. It's karma. It's, karma. it's good. Come on back. We're, interview's good. It's all about the acting, I swear. Not months. at all, not at all. Have a seat. Jeff, he's the new Harry. He's the one that was from uh, the Iraq. Oh, actually, his hair's longer on the side here. Yeah, yeah. Nobody has now. Okay, so Jeff is the new Jeff. No, Jeff's, Jeff's the new Harry. New Harry. Yes. So who is Harry in the character here? I'm I'm confused. I know that he's a vet, but yeah, he's a vet who's an alcoholic. How does he die? Gina's breast. Okay. So tell me, uh, did you have any intimate relations with any of the cast members while you were shooting? Um. Some trailer action. No, there was a lot of really nice people, attractive people. Of course, this is Hollywood, and um, I. Are you focusing on my boobs? Oh, so hairy suffocation of breasts. Well, yes. There's another description of that. Yeah, but the thing is, is I said I would like to use the cellophane. Right. The producer doesn't want to use cellophane. Because in my opinion, there is no way you can suffocate anybody between a woman's yeah, breasts. There's no well, way. Well, well, what's the cellophane significance? I mean, I could understand if you, you cut out a boob around. job and you choke on it or something. But no. Right. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's supposed to be wrapped around his whole head. How'd it get there? And who wrapped him with it? She did. You're still debating between death by boob or death by cellophane. Uh, both, really. I okay. can't. I, I improv and, and put an interjection. I asked, told Rob about everything else. Was putting a plastic bag over his head, uh, a black plastic bag to kind of make up for the cellophane, and then same thing where she just holds him against her breasts. You know. Yeah, but you see, the thing is, but, I wanted to see so that you could actually see through the cellophane yeah, wrapper. Yeah. And he had put it on the camera so that he could look up from right, the POV, POV of him. Well, Jean is looking down at him, right. crying. That would have been cool, yes. Oh, be sure to pass that on. That was the producer. He said no cellophane. <laughs> <laughs> so, I guess you guys are going to have to continue with the death by boo. I think that's why the producer picked me for this film, because of my exquisite beauty. Can't you tell? I'm beautiful. And then we got Annabelle. She's got a British accent. Okay. Lovely girl. Lovely. Yes, yes, yes. And what's her character name? Uh, Jenny. 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 And what is she? She's a, a, a model. A model. High okay. fashion model. High fashion model. I think I'm going to win an Academy Award for this. Carlo, oh, what was your method of payment? <laughs> well, let's just say I took some jewelry that just been happened to be lying around. Anyways, this is Brett, who is the gigolo. His name is Carlo. Carlo. Brett. What's his last name? Winstein? White. Weinstock. Weinstock. I'd say about half a million dollars worth, if not more. Yeah, fucking right. You didn't take all that. What did you do with all of it? How would I know? I was just asked to think of a reason why someone might be after me. You gotta be kidding me. You can actually either got something or you don't. You know what I mean? So I've heard some rumors that a couple of your characters might not be able to be there tomorrow. Yes, that's true. I got received a phone call earlier. Uh, first of all was the character of Carlo, and he already made a prior commitment to another film, a project. Then, uh, on top of that, according to also the message, he said that uh, Annabelle playing Jenny and possibly Jeff playing Harry might not be able to make it either. I don't think we're going to get out of here alive, I'm going to be honest with you. I, I just get this feeling we're all going to die in here. Disgusting fat slob. A faggot, too. Yeah, but you had that little bit in there between Carlo and the kid. To that be little sarcastic, yes, I yes, thought that'd to be, be sarcastic, sarcastic and right. funny. That's the problem they may have. Well, then I, hey, nothing against the gay community. I don't care either way. In a sexual manner. Oh, uh, if they got a problem with that, then they've got the problem, not me. So, how do you feel about the production of this film? It was actually one of the craziest freaking productions I've ever been on. We had like five different directors. I think at one point the actors were directing. Um, one point the script was ripped up. Uh, we, um, we pretty much were showing our true talent as, as performers in this because 
it was a, it was an interesting. How do you feel about all this? What do you plan to do? I haven't decided yet whether I'm going to stick with it or not. Well, it seems like we're in a crunch now. I didn't put it there. It's still part of your project, isn't it? Well, the way I see it now is I did my job. I did what I was asked to do. Now, if I want to stay with it, that's another story now. <clears throat> what kind of joke is this? This is not fucking funny, asshole! Now open up the goddamn door and let us out! Now you're talking, girl! I love it! <laughs> oh god, please, this is my punishment. Spare the rest of them here. So did you kill anybody in this film? Um, yeah I did. I, I, I kill Harry. For me it was a little awkward. Um, I have to suffocate him with my breasts while Steve is pushing him closer to me until he eventually heals over and dies. So it was pretty intense, um, but yeah, that's pretty much how it goes down. Harry, that's not going to happen to you. You know, this has nothing to do with the, the situation in Iraq and nothing to do with God. So just get that out of your head. You know, you have to take it easy and pull your shit together. Oh, shit! Even my boobs are growing muscles! Damn it, at this rate, it's gonna look like a hickey. I gotta have one of those damn turtleneck shirts until this heals. All right, now what, huh? Brett Weinstock, and he is, is Carlo. Carlo. Carlo, the gigolo. The gigolo. Carlo, mm -hmm. the gigolo, that's got a ring to it. Yeah, how does he die? He gets his tongue bitten off and he drowns in his own blood. Ouch! Nice. Jimi Hendrix style, even. Mm. <laughs> Jimmy bit his tongue off? No, he, he choked on his own puke. What's it say, Jenny? Yeah, man. It reads, whoever the bottle points to, I have to French kiss, and hey, you don't need a bottle to kiss me. Fuck no! Fuck no! There's no fucking way in hell that's gonna happen! <laughs> Things on the necks. Everybody has them. We the haven't collars? discussed it yet. The collars, yes. Those uh, are, you designed those to shock? To zap, yes. They, but they, why, they get, why do they get zapped? For what purpose? For not complying with the rules of the game. <laughs> first game, first game is actually two games in one. One is you have to draw straws, and whoever draws the longest straw spins the bottle! You've played spin the bottle before. Of course. <laughs> well, first anyways... Ever. First one ever? With, with the, you know, that kind of atmosphere with boys and girls. That was okay. The first game. So obviously the person, you know, whoever it spins to has to kiss the other person. They're both relieved because she's got to spin the bottle. So it's not one of them that's going to have to spin the bottle and kiss one of them. It's going to be her who has to kiss somebody else. Now, at this point, did they know they had to bite off the tongue? No. Tell me a little bit about this kiss. Oh, well, a kiss with me is always going to be very passionate and sexy. Knowing the fact that Carlo is actually a big guy, a strong guy, he's not going to allow a woman to bite off his tongue. Another note comes in. The note comes in and she reads it. And she's got, you know, pale face. The fact that she's got to bite his tongue off, and that's what she says, and that's where he starts flipping up. Goes, no fucking way, nobody's gonna bite my tongue off. Right. Mm -hmm. So since he's not gonna comply, he's he a big zapped. guy. He starts getting zapped until, until he's, he's like almost uh, passed out. <laughs> there's just a little bit of blood, like when you bite your own tongue. Mm -hmm. There's just a little bit of blood, and she turns away and she starts dagging, gagging, and she says, "You can't do it." Finally, she gets zapped again. <laughs> she gets a hold of her t his tongue again this time, but this time her collar glows, which starts constricting her jaw every time she gets zapped. And the more she gets zapped, you know, the intense the the, uh, the amps going through. The intense of the mm -hmm. bite. So the stronger the bite, until eventually yeah. there's just going to be blood all over her face. <laughs> So after biting off this tongue, um, what did it taste like? Did you like puke? 
and you see just blood dripping down and her tears are in her eyes and she's just freaking out and she just spits it out and starts puking. Goes to another corner and pukes. <laughs> and Carlo in the beginning had said prior to the fact that his tongue uh, never gets tired and he can give a woman, any woman, several orgasms within 30 seconds. So that was his pride and joy, his tongue. Okay. Uh, how do you feel that the gay community might feel as though you're homophobic making the spin the bottle be between male and female traditionally instead of male to male now or female to female? Oh, then I got a question for them. How can they judge me when they don't even know me on how I wrote the script? Kid. Let's go back to Kid here. Eddie. Kid. Uh, his name is Eddie in the as a character, and high school dropout, works for fast food, low self-esteem person, and he tries to hide it by being a punk, macho, whatever. Okay. He gets castrated. Ow! By Nancy the Butcher. By the by Butcher. By yeah. the Butcher lady here. Who knows knives? <laughs> wow. So Nancy goes behind him. Puts her arm around his waist hair, takes the knife and castrates him from behind. Oh! Ow! He bleeds to death. He bleeds to death. Okay, yeah. so with all this blood, is there a room for a vampire or something like that? Maybe a lesbian one. A lesbian <laughs> hey, vampire. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that can say I'll see you next month. But anyway. <laughs> or a oh. cannibal, yeah. No. Ouch! <laughs> Everybody's pretty much grossed out by the blood. There, there, there's no element for a cannibal or a vampire in there. So No. Gina, watch out! with a double-edged sword that goes in my hiney. It's pretty painful. Fuck! Poor girl! Jenny is the one who is the winner. Gina loses. Gina loses. Jenny's the winner. Yeah, Jenny goes up, gets the note, and all of a sudden there's supposed to be this strap-on, if you want to call it that, but it's like <laughs> panties with a blade sticking out of it instead of a dildo. Fuck the loser up the ass. Oh, right. With the, Ooh. With the knife. Okay, it has to ramrod the knife. Do it from the behind. Keister. Do it from behind, yeah. Yeah, okay, in the keister. And bless you, she got a big keister, let me tell you. Jenny, why did you do it? <laughs> I'm so sorry. And I'm a professional. About this role, you were the first to die? First uh, to kill, I'm sorry, you were the first to kill. Uh, How did it feel killing? Oh, sorry. Um, it actually was quite thrilling. And during rehearsal, I, I found myself getting taken away with my character because I bought his tongue off and it actually was a little yummy. But, of course, that's just between you and me. <laughs> so what's the second game? Uh, second game, um, we're trying to remember the order here. Okay, here's the um, script. Um, let's see, second one to die is Eddie, right? No. Harry! Oh, Harry's first? Harry's second. Oh, so it's Hangman. It's the second game, right? Mm -hmm. Are you sure? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I thought Harry died later, but okay. No, he's second. So the second game is Hangman. The letters. To spell and form the words, then they're the ones that are going to die. Um, then, the, like you said, another note will come through on how he's going to die. Not every, yeah, Gina, not every winner's Gina gonna, is the host of this one. Yeah, Gina is the host of this, so she has to kill him. Oh, well, Gina has to suffocate him. Uh, well, you see, she, she reads it and it says, if it's by, if the suffocation is done by female, it oh, has yeah. to be done by between her breasts. Right. If it's done by male, then she says, well, as you can see, I'm obviously female, so we don't have to mention the male. <laughs> Good twist. I like it. So would you say you're pretty disappointed with this? I really just want to finish, get everything going, and see what happens with the finished product. I still see a problem with suffocation by breasts. I wish the producer would be a little lenient and let us do the cellophane because we, we can do the POV, but 
you got the call and he didn't like it, so. So how do you feel the gay community <coughs> might act about death? Why do you keep bringing up the gay community? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, why does <laughs> a woman be a self <laughs> Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> Let's be friends, okay? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's be friends. <laughs> so how was the lighting, the camera, craft service? On what show? This one? This is the show we're talking about. Oh, because I didn't see any of that. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, then, anyways, after that, a game of war. And Carly. Carlo, yeah, Carlo is the host of this one. Carlo shows him the deck. Gina says, oh, strip poker, huh? Lucky for you, it's the three of us here. Says, I don't think that's what they have in mind. So did you find any of the women on this set attractive? Yeah, I did. I, I like the girl with the big tits. And, um, I mean, those are so big that uh, I don't, if I got one of them, I don't know what I'd do with the other one. <laughs> JD and JD says, well, I really don't like to play, but if it's, if it's poker or something, then I'll play for money. They all sit in the middle of the floor. Three people playing war. Four. Four people playing war. I thought it was against two, wasn't it? Was yeah, it but war is always a two-person game. Thank no, you. No. Thank you. you can I said that to no. him. I've never played it more than two Thank people. Thank you. I, I have. I said that. Okay, you'll have to show me after the interview. Yes. You just play. You just dish out all the cards like you normally do. So what I plan to do is take her out to dinner. Where are you going to take her? Burger King. <laughs> <laughs> you dish them all out. Okay. Still. War is against one on one, and he agreed. Thank you. It's it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, well, I do you agree. Got, you it got is the, a you one got the one three women and said. him. Steve. So that's four. And, uh, hey, you ain't got no burgers back there, do you? <laughs> no, I, I don't. Yeah, because, you know, I, I'm, I like to have my double cheeseburgers every day to get started. Mm. You know? um, Billy Tim, did you ever watch his show? Once I saw that Billy Tim, I really got scared and knew it was time to get off of this shit. He's such a creepy little monster. So what are you going to do next after the dinner? I'm going to get her some burgers, like you said, and I'm going to buy some shakes, and I'm going to shake her up. <laughs> There's a card game of some sort. I'm just, by my own opinion, that's all. I'm not, any right. size or not. We'll say, but anyways, we'll work with it. It's no, it's still it war. I don't care. It's my script. Okay, sounds oh, good. Oh, there I go. wrote it. That's the bottom line. There you go. Billy Tim, aren't you worried about the grease, the burgers being bad, the meat, you know, E. coli, you know, you get anal disease. What? <laughs> anal disease? Yeah. Sick. Anyways, you know, uh, I think all that's good for me. Uh, even the, the girl would be even better for me because uh, all the grease is really loosening her up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to grease her up. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> uh, all of a sudden, just takes the knife and stabs herself. She doesn't want to kill Jenny or Gina. So once again, he takes the gay element out again. Oh, Billy Tim, I don't know. This has been some interview. You cracked me up with all your burgers. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, anyways, I'd like to introduce y'all to see my show. If you do get a chance, you can watch it on adamfilms.com and type in The Billy Tim Show in the search bar and then the show will start playing. <laughs> Gina is pregnant, and she's oh, no one she that knows. She, yeah, no one else knows about it because Gina whispered it to her earlier. Okay, so oh, Steve doesn't new. know about it. Nobody in the room knew, knew about it except for Jenny. Because she didn't feel right about killing two. Right. Okay. Plus, it was self-sacrificial too because she didn't want to kill Gina anyways. So, how do the women respond to your vehicle? Well, I go up to the girls and I say, "Hey, girl, you want to come in a ride?" My brand new tractor. <laughs> that really shakes him up. Yeah, it kind of is a little bit, you know, because the muffler's right down yonder. <laughs> now, is that a John Deere or a Murphy? No, it ain't neither one. It's it's sort of a mixed. A mixed? How, yeah. How so can it be mixed? Well, uh, see, I ran over the deer in the tractor. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming hey, out. Thanks Everybody so can stay tuned. Billy Tim show, watch at 12 o'clock on YouTube tonight. Thank you. Gina is on top of Jenny, and Steve is on top of her. Pounding her. So we do get our threesome. And at the end, basically, towards where So Steve where are we at? One left? Yeah, Nancy. Nancy. Yeah. I wanted to go to the bathroom. Oh my god, I've had to go since yesterday. Yeah, Nancy takes her Thank first you. dump. Okay. Second dump. No. The first one was hers. Her, her first. Okay. Right. That's, That's what first. I just said. Nancy takes her first dump. Okay. Yeah. Nancy's still squatting down. She goes, Oh, of all times, I didn't finish it. Let me finish first, right? Right now, as far as the game we're supposed to play. <laughs> <laughs>
just a flip of a coin. One side is life, the other side is death. The last game that they actually play is flip of a coin. Wait a minute, Steve. What? Give me one more time. I'll flip it and call it. How can I trust you? How? Is there any significance to this game? Any of tricks? <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, he has a two, he has a two-sided coin. Okay. We shot this scene with Nancy and with Steve, and it was done really well. They did a great job together. Um, it was really easy to direct. I'm excited to see it. Yeah, it came out really well. The one who killed you would have been up last night when you were sleeping. Right? Yeah, that's true. So call it. Heads. In there before is that, you know, it says, well, if it comes down to between me and you, Nancy, you know, I'm going to live. Puts his hands in his pockets. And he says, well, you can't nag on your call. You call tails, right? And she says, you do. So he reaches in the other pocket and gets out the double-sided tail coin <laughs> and flips it. So no matter what it lands on, it's going to be tails. Steve, wait, wait. I want another turn. I don't like this. Okay. I want you to turn. Flip that fucker again. You're a fucking bastard. You are fucking crazy. You're a fucker. You're crazy! Well, Nancy, it's been nice knowing you. You're a piece of dirt. Do you think you're gonna fucking kill me while the fucking coin is out the door? This is my game now, baby. You're a fucker and you're a lunatic. You got it? You're a piece of dirt, dirt on the floor. You think you're gonna fucking kill me? You insane fuck! You forget who the pro is here. I cut meat for a living. You got it? I get scared now. Okay, just get it over with. I'm gonna die. God, forgive me for my sins. But you are a lousy, you're gonna burn in hell. Just get it over with, fucker! So what happens to her? She gets choked. Mm. Mm. Strictly a basic strangulation. So, you know, I just had to just put my hands on the throat and just shake violently and just act like it was, I mean, I'm not hurting you, am I? No, no, but it's very lifelike. Why? Why? Forgiven. Okay, I'm show that you are. Bitch, you bitch, I'm gonna fucking kill you. My remote control actually turns out was my garage door opener. So the whole time I thought I was shocking people, I was actually opening and closing my garage door. And so the computer took over. Alex, open the door please. Alex says, I'm sorry sir, but the games aren't over. Mm -hmm. He said, but the games are over because I'm the last one. Alex. God damn it, Alex! I'm the only one left in here! Open the fucking door! True, sir. You are the last one. But the games aren't over. All the games were not played. Because when Jenny killed herself, that threw it out of whack, is what he says. Now open the goddamn door! So the computer is watching now? Yes. Yeah. And is able to... And, and he's recording. The whole time. He's recording for Steve's purposes. So okay. He's recording he's... and watching at the same right. time. Alex, what fucking game? I didn't program any other games! Just open up the fucking door or else! You're speaking of some sort of artificial intelligence. Is that what you're going for? Yes, but the thing is, is this AI uh, is more like a four or five year old, but with a computer intelligent. That's why it argues. And it was the birth of artificial intelligence. I mean, believe it or not, I, I created that myself. All right, Alex, what's going on in you? Please explain. 
I see. So, he's trying to escape. Not happening. Not going to happen. One game to play. Steve looks at it and says, this is not the game I put in. And I can't play this by myself. He says, I need somebody else in here, so you're going to have to open the door so I can get somebody else in here. Computer says, oh, no, you're not going to try to get me to open up. Try to, you know, fool me, trick me, let you out. He says, well, I need somebody in here to play this game. The computer says, well, I can be the other player. Steve says, well, I can't play this game by myself because... No, I'm not going to say what game it is. It's that one surprise. No, 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 yeah. At least okay, we're not going to tell him this game. Final game. You have to watch the movie. Yes. God's Game. <laughs> this guy deserves an award. Yes, really. Somebody finally wakes up. I'm Steve. Where in the hell am I? We're in some kind of a holding room. What the hell is this, a collar? Yes, it's a collar of some sort. Who are you? Carlo. Where in the hell are you? I'm Martha. I'm fucking covered. It's fucking cold. Wow. And the name's Carlo, not Mark. What the fuck? When the hell, where's Mark? I can keep you warm. When the hell, where am I? What's with all that yakking over there? I'm trying to get some sleep, God. What's going on? What's with this? Goddamn dog collar! Threw it around my neck! Wow. Oh. you too. If I could be so lucky. Two at the same time. Fuck you. Hey! You're making a foursome. I get it, kid. From the looks of you, you are much too young, and you couldn't possibly hang with the Italian stallion Oh, fuck you, asshole. <laughs> I'm older than you. <sighs> you know, I've had more women than you can possibly imagine. Oh, I can't imagine. It's not much of one when it comes to you. Besides, you couldn't be any more than, uh, what, 20? Inches? Well, man, you're getting close. <laughs> Does that make you gay or me? <laughs> what the hell is this? What the hell is going on? Oh my god. Look at this contaminated floor. This filthy, disgusting floor. Who's in charge here? Huh? Who's in charge? Oh my god. Where's my Where's my cigarettes? Oh my god. Shit. Where the hell are my cigarettes? I had a pack last night. Okay, wait a second. I had a fucking pack of cigarettes and now they're gone. Did someone fucking steal them when I was sleeping? What is this shit? What is going on here? This is crazy! Look at this disgusting floor and all these germs! Oh my god, all these germs all over me! It's so disgusting! Oh my god, what is going on here? Hey, lady, take it easy. Take it easy? You're telling me to take it easy? Who are you to tell me to take it easy? I don't know. Uh, what? We got white walls. Is this a bunny farm? What is this? I don't know what this is! Take it easy! 
crazy, you're telling yeah. me. Yeah, and yeah. nobody your secrets. I've been trying to quit the nasty habits anyway, so it's okay. But look at these germs. I can't handle it. The germs are on me. I'm trying to... Look at the lip balls! Hey, hey, and the lip balls hey, on me! Hey, hey, oh, I had no fucking idea of anything myself, okay? Oh, my All God. I was gonna do, all I was... Hey, all I, all I was gonna do is offer you a cigarette. Is that okay? We got a cigarette. What is this fucking dog collar around my neck? Oh, <coughs> it's so tight! Look at the lint on me, I can't handle this. Hey, lint. you! Lint. You gonna be okay over there? Look like you're losing it to me. I gotta get the lint off. Calm this down. Is, forget it. The lint. Calm down. The lint balls. Calm, calm down, forever. calm down. Forever. Uh, I, I, I'm beginning to wonder, dunce cap or a straight jacket? Please, huh? calm down. Too much lint. Or is it just a cigarette? Are you a nicotine addict? <laughs> hey! <sighs> you gonna be all right over there? Because it looks like you're freaking losing it to me. Are you talking to me? Forget it. I don't with the blanket in the middle of the room. I guess it's for the two women here and myself. Carlo isn't. Hmm. Let's get your mind out of the gutter and figure out what's going on, okay? Yeah. First, let's introduce ourselves. I'm Steve Gates. And you? I'm Jean. Carlo here. I'm Jenny. Harry here. What's up with these stupid collars, though? Seriously. I have no idea. All I know is it was there when I woke up. And you? Eddie. It's Nancy. And I gotta get this collar off my neck. What's up? Hey! Is anybody out there? Seen anything? Is anybody out there? Hey! Is anybody out there? What do you see? Anything? Nothing, just the reflection of the door in the mirror. Oh shit. What's wrong? Dude, you can't be much of a gigolo if you can't see what's going on here. Romeo. What? She's gotta go to the damn bathroom, all right? Oh, I, I can see that. All right, I'm tired of standing here twirling my fucking thumbs waiting for something to happen. We need to figure out what the fuck is going on or at least try and find some goddamn way out of here. Yeah. He's right. Anyone got any uh, ideas? What was the last thing you did last night, Gina. What the fuck does that have to do with us being here? No. If I read him right, it's to find out if we have anything in common. Common denominator. Anything about our abductions that's similar or different. Anything that'll give us something to go on. Yeah. Yeah, well... The last thing I remember is I was getting off of Getting off of work, and I was headed out my alley. That, that's the back way to my club. I always go that way. And then some asshole mugged me or jumped me, whatever. He put his hand over my mouth, and I smelled, smelled chloroform. And then, and then I blacked out. And that's the last thing I can remember. Waking up in here. Anything about our abductions is similar or different? What the hell does that have to do with us being in here? I was coming out of my agent's office last <clears> night. It must have been about half past nine. And then I woke up here with you guys. That's what I'm trying to figure out here, Eddie. I just need everyone to tell me 
is there anything, any reason why someone would want to do something like this to you? Are you expecting all of us to spill the beans on ourselves? If it means getting out of here alive, yes. I want everybody to walk out on their own two feet, right? Steve, what makes you think we're not going to get out of here alive? Let, let alone let, on our own two feet. Because I did not mean to say it that way. I, I, I don't know why I said it that way. It's, it's just the way it came out, right? You know, I have a really strong feeling about uh, not getting out of here alive. I don't know what it is. It's something deep inside. Hey, man, why me first again, huh? Why not someone else? Carlo, why don't you go first then? I can't think of anything offhand either. This got to be something from your past experience. You sure you didn't piss someone off or dupe them? Well, the only thing I can think of happened several years ago. Hmm. It happened when I was over in Paris. There was this gorgeous woman. They were all Go. gorgeous to you, Romeo, as long as they have money. As I was saying, one of my many encounters in life ended up infatuated with me. You see, I've got this mean tongue. It never gets tired, it never hurts, and it never wants to stop. Oh, really? I can't even I can get <laughs> any woman several orgasms <laughs> within the first minute, Ooh. and a lot more after that. Oh. Carlo, what was your method of payment? <laughs> well, let's just say I took some jewelry that just been, happened to be lying around. I'd say about half a million dollars worth if not more. Yeah, fucking right. You didn't take all that. What did you do with all of it? How would I know? I was just asked to think of a reason why someone might be after me. You gotta be kidding me. You guys you either got something or you don't. You know what I mean? I don't think we're gonna get out of here alive. I'm gonna be honest with you. I, I just get this feeling we're all gonna die in here. A disgusting fat slob. A faggot, too. What kind of joke is this? This is not fucking funny, asshole! Now open up the goddamn door and let us out! Now you're talking, girl! I love it! <laughs> oh god! Please, if this is my punishment, spare the rest of them here. Harry, that's not going to happen to you. You know, this has nothing to do with the, the situation in Iraq and nothing to do with God. So just get that out of your head. You know, you have to take it easy and pull your shit together. <laughs> oh, shit! Even my boobs are growing muscles! <laughs> damn it, at this rate, it's going to look like a hickey. I'm going to have to wear those damn turtleneck shirts until this heals. All right, now what, huh? What's it say, Jenny? Yeah, man. It reads, whoever the bottle points to, I have to French kiss. And, hey, you don't need a bottle to kiss me. Fuck no. Fuck no. There's no fucking way in hell this gonna happen. And I'm a professional.
be sick. Oh, it stinks in here. Oh my God. Oh, I have to go to the bathroom. Oh my God, I've had to go since yesterday. All right, now as far as the game we're supposed to play, it's just a flip of a coin. One side is life, the other side is death. Wait a minute, Steve. What? Give me one more time. I'll flip it and call it. How can I trust you? How? The one who killed you would have done it last night while you were sleeping, right? Yeah, that's true. So call it. Heads. Steve, wait, wait. Yeah. I want another turn. I don't like this. Okay. I good. want you to turn. Flip that fucker again! You're a fucking bastard. You are fucking crazy. You're a fucker. You're crazy! Well, Nancy, it's been nice knowing you. You're a piece of dirt. You think you're gonna fucking kill me while the fucking coin is out the door? This is my game now, baby. You're a fucker and you're a lunatic. You got it? You're a piece of dirt. Dirt on the floor. You think you're gonna fucking kill me? You insane fuck! You forget who the pro is here. I cut meat for a living. You got it? Think it's fair now? <sighs> okay, just get it over with. I'm gonna die. God, forgive me for my sins. You are a lousy, you're gonna burn in hell. Just get it over with, fucker! Alex, open the door, please. Alex. God damn it, Alex! I'm the only one left in here! Open the fucking door! Now open the goddamn door! Alex, what fucking game? I didn't program any other games. Just open up the fucking door or else! Ah, oh, god damn! Fuck, Alex! What the fuck do you think you're doing? Ugh! <laughs>